The Royal Hotel's where I checked in, drinking the night away on gin. With vagabonds for company and fair weather friends of sin. At around last orders, I bowed farewell. For Green Lane I headed, trusting my nose. I had a taste for mischief, so I danced on up the street. I conversed with shadows, oh what mighty fine fellows. We traded old tales of life off the rails. Whilst the smokestacks of industry plumed out smog in the distance, I stumbled across a red lit window. The house of ill fame is where I had to go. I chose Madame Green for company. Oh, what a glorious night she had in store for me. On the next morning, I took her back to the hotel for a champagne breakfast of oysters and lobster shells. We drank all day and reveled in fun, but I felt rather naked without my gun. I phoned Nathan, the taxi driver, who dropped me from the airport, who'd said he could saw anything as long as it could be bought. A few hours later, he cut his fare for the day short and delivered the sturdy weapon of which I sought. We lashed it up until closing time, still accompanied by our lady of the night. Madame Greenshaw knew how to party, so when all of our bottles were empty, she told us of the travellers' rest up the road. We jumped in the motor and sped past coppers whom we did goad. A couple tried to track us on their bikes. We laughed, then greeted them with two-fingered signs. They didn't seem to take this all too politely, and I can only assume they radioed in for company. Because when we arrived at our destination, our laughter turned to devastation. They read us our rights, quoted verbatim, then herded us up and drove us away. When we arrived at the station, they breathalyzed us all, including Nathan. By this time, I was really struggling to see. But those coppers manhandled Madame Green right in front of me. I still, to this day, don't quite know what came over me. But I took aim with the shooter and inflicted misery. Unsurprisingly, the courts didn't see my intervention as visionary. The aftermath of the trial called into question a jury's legitimacy as they tried to decide my fate by taking straws on my butchery. I served my time shackled by guilt and lived up to my name the man of ill fame, the gun-wielding drunk who changed the legal game.